Welcome to Ride the Live, the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. My name is Tanner Kern. I'm a certified G. I'm a bona fide stud. I'm the world champion there, and you can't teach that. And this right here, this is G Money Grant Mitchell. We're bringing you the MLB picks today because the people don't want the picks. The people need the picks, and you can't teach that. Bada boom. Man, the people in the room, how you doing? Welcome in to a Monday edition of Ride the Line. You liked how I did that, Grant? You liked it? I saw in the back. It felt right. Wait, well, yeah, what's going on with that world champion stuff? Normally, I mimic your intro, and you threw it off today. I, I wanted to change it up a little bit. It's Monday. It's a new week. Baseball's almost over. It's football. It's football time. It's time to change. Let's get rid of this baseball. It's almost football. Hold on, hold on. You're the baseball guy. During the I basketball season, you were love. telling me we need MLB games. Oh, well, yeah. You, you get like this at the beginning of every season when football rolls around. Like, I had so much more fun betting on preseason football this weekend than I did on MLB baseball. I had a lot more fun watching preseason football. Not betting on the Patriots, though. No, the Patriots bent me over pretty hard. Um, you know, so, like, yeah, the Patriots didn't work out. Whoever the game was after the Patriots was good. I forget who that one was. I got two right in that game. And then the – oh, the, the the you know, game worked out really well for me. What was the game yesterday before the Niners game? Oh, gosh. I don't know. <laughs> the, the Saints. The Saints and Chiefs. Oh, the Saints and the Chiefs. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the it. Chiefs were up with 50 seconds to go, and they throw the ball on their own 20-yard line. And then the Saints pick it off, and they kick a game-winning field goal, and I had Saints minus one and a half. So it worked out pretty well. But, like, that was just so stupid by the Chiefs. So I, my preseason bets have just been a disaster. And it's weird because normally in the preseason, what you don't expect to happen happens. So I was trying to go out of left field with most of my picks, and that didn't work either way. I mean, I'm excited to be betting and, and watching the preseason, but I really need the regular season to start. That's where the fun really happens. Everyone says the preseason is easier to bet. That's that's bull crap. That's not true at all. It's because you don't. You don't know who you're getting. Oh, yeah, well, the, okay, Patrick Mahomes is going to play a series. Then it's going to be these two guys. Well, those two guys suck. So you got to account for that. And you don't. You can't account for how bad they suck. It's tough. No, and, I mean, not just that, too. A lot of NFL games are decided by the quarterback, right? So you can go into a game saying, oh, well, Russell Wilson's going to play a couple series for the Broncos, and then Jared Stidham's going to play. We've seen Stidham. He, he's decent. Well, Clayton Toon ends up throwing for 135 yards and a touchdown for the Cardinals. They end up winning that game. You just can't predict that. No, you can't. Anyways, we can predict baseball, and that's what we're predicting today. But before we end the picks, remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Smash the subscribe button. we got a lot of fun stuff coming up during football. If you don't subscribe right now, you're going to miss it. You get email alerts when you subscribe. That's the benefit. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. It's not rocket science. It has never been rocket science, and it will never be rocket science. Never has been, never will be. Just like this first pick here, not rocket science. It's the Seattle Mariners for me. Money line versus the Kansas City Royals. One of the worst teams in baseball versus a very good Mariners team. Logan Gilbert's going to be getting the start for the Mariners here. He's 10-7 and seven with a 366 ERA and a 102 whip. Very impressive. Taking on Brady Singer of the Royals, who's 8-8 eight and eight with a 505 ERA and a 137 whip. Now, Gilbert, he's been having a good year, but he's been even better as of late. Got a 259 across the last two months, which is uh, – it comprises seven starts. Five of those seven have been considered quality starts. The Mariners have won 13 of their last 17 road games, including eight of 10 since the All-Star break. They had also just won eight straight games until they lost back-to-back to the Orioles. But you know what? It's the Orioles. Right now, the class of the American League. You can't hold that against them. And going from playing the Royals – or excuse me, the Orioles to the Royals – Obviously there's, obviously, there's a pretty clear uh, drop-off. Now, the one thing I will say about the Royals, their offense has been significantly better than it was in the first half of the season. However, that's not a trend that's going to hold. The regression monster will come for them at some point, and I don't like them against a very good Seattle team here. One last thing about the Mariners, actually. Over the last month, they lead the MLB in bullpen ERA. So if this game is remotely close going down the stretch, you can count on the Mariners to close it out. I agree. I like that. I think the Mariners are playing really good baseball right now. They're in line for the American League wild card on um, that third spot with the Blue Jays and the Red Sox are competing for it. But I like that pick, Grant. Good pick. Good find. Thank you. And it's pretty good value. It's in the minus 140s as we're recording this. Again, Mariners money line for, against the Royals. Sign me up for that. I like it. All right. I'm going to go with the under of seven and a half in the Rays versus Giants game. There's a chance this gets up to eight. 
I think, because the under is plus money right now. So people are just, you know, people might not go for the under. So if people are going to hammer the over, um, that's going to move the line up a little bit. So I would wait to play this one. It's at seven and a half, as I said. Uh, but I think it does get up to eight. You look at Tyler Glass now, he's going to be on the map for Tampa Bay Rays. Five and three with a 315 ERA and a whip right around one. 96 strikeouts in 68 innings. He is legit when it comes to getting swing and miss. Going against Ryan Walker, young buck here. Ryan Walker, 27 years old. Doesn't even have a profile picture on the ESPN. Four and one with a two four ERA and a one one nine whip. He's been pitching very well uh, and very strong. And you look at the Rays; their offense has not been that good as of late. Yes, they scored nine runs against the Guardians in the opener of that series. They have a six run outing in that series as well. But their last game was they only scored two runs. Before that, against the Cardinals, they scored two runs and four runs. So they really haven't been lighting up the scoreboard by any means. And the Giants have just fallen off the map when it comes to offense here. They have been terrible. They've scored or three runs, three runs, one run, one run, and five runs. So not delivering at all. I don't think they're going to be able to touch glass now today. And I like this game to stay under seven and a half, but wait until it goes up to eight because it will. It will. Yeah, the Giants are hitting 206 since the All-Star break. And the Rays offense, um, uh, if you want to find more details, maybe open up Twitter and, and check for yourself. But let's just say Wander Franco isn't going to be there. Um, it's funny this line's at uh, seven and a half because I think it's the under 14s that might be causing him problems. Yeah, Wander, Wander, Wander got caught on Twitter with a fourteen-year-old. I, we, it, they're still allegedly, they're investigating allegedly, but he would probably never play baseball again. But I was looking at his contract. The Rays actually did a really good job with his contract if he has to get like dropped because they only had to give him a five million dollar signing bonus. Like he got one hundred eighty million. Like signing bonus, like five million on it. It's crazy. Yeah, and I mean, you know. I, I, we want to put this out there. This is all allegedly. We got no idea. We're not reporting anything. We're just going off the rumors. But the, he didn't travel to San Francisco with the team. The Rays have come out and said publicly they are investigating social media posts involving him. So who knows? Maybe where there's smoke, there's fire. Certainly hope not. But bottom line is he's not going to play today. That's definitely going to hurt his team's offense. I think the under here is actually a good call, even with that low line. But especially if it moves up to 8-2, I really like this. Did you see the promo on August, like, 13th or whatever. oh no yes i saw, I it, was saw like, it was like first like a thousand fans 14 and under get this hat uh, just bad timing it was a bad. wander franco hat too yeah, really. wander yeah. Franco hat. bad timing anyways next pick yeah my uh my second pick of the year second pick of the day here i'm going with the baltimore orioles money line versus the san diego padres on the bump for the orioles will be grayson rodriguez he's two and three with a 584 ERA and a 149 whip going against you Darvish who's eight and seven with a 419 and a 125 whip now Grayson Rodriguez that he started the year pretty awfully then make no bones about it but he went down to the triple a and ever since he came back he's had five starts and he's looked a lot better he's got a 351 ERA four straight outings of three earned runs or less got a couple shutouts in there so he's been really good now Darvish has been having a pretty terrible season over the last month he has been lights out so he does have that behind him but Grayson Rodriguez I mean he's in his early 20s you're supposed to see improvement from him Darvish a veteran like him he's uh he's starting to lose his control a little bit just as he gets older but the pitchers aren't so much the reason I'm making this pick it's a lot to do with the offenses the Orioles like I was talking about with my last pick they just won back-to-back -back games on the road, keep in mind, they're doing a little West Coast tour here. Already won back-to-back -back games on the road against a very good Mariners team, a very hot Mariners team. Now they're going to take on the Padres here. The Orioles play just as good on the road as pretty much anybody in the league. I mean, the Padres' offense is decent, but it's, it's so damn inconsistent that you never know what you're going to get from them. And if we look at the home away splits, the Orioles are third in road scoring. The Padres are 20th. In home scoring, a lot of that speaks to the consistency or the lack thereof for the Padres here. And then if we look at the bullpens over the last month, the Orioles bullpen's actually been pretty good. They're seventh in bullpen ERA. The Padres are down at 17th. Bottom line here is I have a pretty good understanding of what I'm going to get from Baltimore in this spot. With San Diego, it's a whole lot of nothing but hopes and, and maybes and ifs, ands, buts. So I'm going to take the Orioles here. I like the play. Anytime you get the Orioles for, for this kind of price, you take it. It's just that simple. I saw a little graphic on Twitter the other day, and it was just, you know, who if you had to pick the World Series winner, who are you taking right now? And to see the Orioles, they were listed third behind the Braves and the Dodgers. To see that picture as them being the class of the AL was just kind of crazy to look at. They're the best team in the American League. And they are, no doubt about it. But just, I mean, it shouldn't be like that. It should not be like that, yet they are.
Imagine if they spent a little money too and just had like a couple like big name starters, like be be lights out. They would easily win the American. They'd be the Braves of the American League. Yeah, they they would. I mean, honestly. And speaking of the Braves, though, I mean, right now they're still my pick. Are you picking them right now? Yeah, I think the Braves are just too strong in a seven game series. But it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me to see the Baltimore Orioles get there out of the American League either. The only thing I worry about is experience in the big moments. But, I mean, they've held their composure throughout the most of the season, so it's definitely possible. They have no pitching either. That's why they, no star- they have no big starters. That's the problem. Like, they have to hit the ball. Like, these one nothing games they're winning, they're not going to win those in the playoffs, I don't think. No, they're, they're, they're starting pitch them. They're counting on uh, guys like Grayson Rodriguez or, or Jack Flaherty, who, who are – they're counting on them to perform better than what we think of them as. And when you get to, you know, the World Series inevitably, but the postseason as well, that, that becomes a lot tougher to do. Yeah. All right, second pick for me. The Oakland Athletics are 33-85 and 85 this season. The Cleveland Guardians are – or not the Cleveland Guardians. The St. Louis Cardinals are 52-66. and 66. I think it's more of a disappointment that the St. Louis Cardinals are 52 and 66 compared to the athletics being 33 and 85 because this Cardinals team has talent and they've consistently underperformed and the athletics have their ace going. You ever heard of JP Sears? JP. Oh yeah. I've got some cool stats. So you go ahead though. He's a dog. JP Sears, actual dog two and nine on the season. That's not because of him. That's because of his offense Four two ERA one, one whip. 117 strikeouts in 125 innings. The walks have been okay. The home runs have been a little high, but JP Sears is pitching like an absolute animal right now. Last start wasn't very good against Texas Rangers, but it's the Rangers. Again, shoved the Dodgers over five innings, shoved the Rockies over five innings, pitched well against the Twins over six innings. So he's been doing okay there. Miles Mikolas going for the Cardinals. He's been good recently. Um, actually been pretty damn good recently. Um, but at the same time, too, when I look at this Cardinals team, they're just not performing at all. The Oakland A's can hang with them. Um, we've seen what they can do in the past few days. They've been able to cover some spreads there against the Washington Nationals. I think the Cardinals are almost as bad as the Nationals. And St. Louis, I think, just disappointing season. I think the Athletics will be able to hang in one game in the series, at least. And it's probably going to be this one. J.P. Sears, in his last four games on the road, has given up four earned runs in 22 innings. That's a 1.63 ERA. He plays better on the road. The A's score more runs on the road. And the Cardinals aren't necessarily a whole lot better on their home field. So I think I've got this pick written down as well. I was definitely going to consider giving it out. I love this pick. I think the A's are going to cover today. I like it. I don't know if I love it. I can't love anything with the A's, but I do like it. Yeah, and one one also one last thing here too. By the way, over the last fifteen games, the Cardinals have only covered six times. It's forty percent. The A's are over fifty five percent during that stretch. So even though the Cardinals are the better team as far as record goes, has not translated into as much betting success, believe it or not, as what the A's have put together. No. Nope. Okay, my final pick here. I'm going to take the over in the Astros Marlins game. The line is only at seven and a half. And I kind of understand, but I also, I also really don't. Let me talk about it. So, Fran Valdez is on the bump here for the Astros. He's 9-7 and seven with a 3.30 ERA and a 109 whip. And he's going against Braxton Garrett, who's 6-3 and three with a 408 ERA and a 119 whip. Now, Fran Valdez, excuse me, Tanner, I should have had this pulled up in advance, but let me just read you some of his games here because it's kind of – it's just funny to hear. So, the last time we saw him, six earned runs in seven innings. Before that, a complete game no-hitter. The game before that, six earned runs in three innings, four earned runs in five innings, five earned runs in six innings, four earned runs in six innings. So he's been terrible, and then he had a no-hitter, and then it was terrible again. It was almost like that Domingo Herman moment with him um, against the Athletics, if you remember that one. And, I mean, I guess the uh, uh, Valdez's no-hitter was against the Guardians, who can't hit the baseball, so, I mean, that is one thing. But bottom line is – Framer Valdez is going through a rough spot right now. And now if we flip it and we talk about Garrett, yes, he's got a 408 ERA for the season, but he had a 592 last month, and he's actually got a 540 at home. He's a lot better on the road than he is at home. And the Astros, they're also fourth in scoring since the All-Star break, which obviously is going to help lean into the over here. The Marlins are second worst, but they have started to look a little bit better as of late. They were just putrid for the first couple of weeks coming out of the intermission it has started to get a little bit better there and neither one of these bullpens are good I mean it feels like we're just one swing of the bat away from this game going over with that line only at seven and a half I feel like there's no reason to hit the over here yeah I don't think so 
I like this play here, Grant. You did a nice job breaking it down. I like the play. I really thank do. you. Thank you. Let's hear out. Let's hear your final one. I see. I'm so locked in on my final play here. I, I can't even think right now. I, I got I got something to say about the New York Yankees. These guys are absolute trash. <laughs> absolute trash. I had the Yankees yesterday. I did. I had them. I bet them. And they lost. And they were up big. But they give up. I think it was five. It was either five or six in the bottom of the ninth. They gave up five in the bottom of the ninth to lose eight to seven. This is a trash poverty franchise that is now 60 and 58. And I hope Yankee fans would agree. This team's not good. It's built around one player. And when the one player isn't playing or playing well or just hitting, they're terrible. Like th- that yesterday was yesterday. Like the Yankees had some bad losses this season, but yesterday was that loss that like makes you wake up and say, what are we doing? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? We're 60 and 58. We're not making the playoffs. And like, we are just a dog water poverty franchise. So anyways, the Atlanta Braves, I will probably watch this game tonight. I will. The Atlanta Braves are coming to Yankee stadium. They were in New York last night playing for the Mets. Mets beat them last night. Game is in Atlanta. Game's in Atlanta. My bad. I thought they would just stick, keep them in the same city. It but makes anyway. no sense why they're playing at Mets home for Yankees. I don't get no, that. I would think they, for a, for an interleague series, I thought they would just keep them in New York. But anyways, this game is going to be an absolute whomping by the Atlanta Braves. The Atlanta Braves offense is just so powerful. They fell down four or five runs yesterday. They were able to fight back and lose by a run. I mean, so many guys are hitting home runs. If you if pitchers make one mistake, the Braves are going to hit home runs. They're a legitimate baseball team. Yesterday was a bad loss for them to the New York Mets. But today, they are going to bounce back and cover on the run line in this spot. When you look at the Braves here, Max Freed's going for them. I believe he's returning from injury again today. 3-1 and one with a 2-5 ERA. Whip right around one. He was sensational last time he returned from injury. I expect him to be very good today. Yeah, the last time he pitched was on August 9th. So this is not that's not the case. Two starts ago, he returned from injury. He was sensational. Um, Clark Schmidt going for the Yankees, eight and six with a four two ERA, one two nine WHIP. Clark Schmidt, he's been good in his past five starts. I do think he's going to be okay, but even if you're okay, the Braves are still going to hit you here. So I'm going to take the Braves at minus one and a half. The Yankees cannot compete offensively with this Atlanta team. No, there's no, there's absolutely no way they can. You like the starting pitching matchup, even though Schmidt has been good lately. You like Freed better. Over the last two months, the Braves have the best bullpen ERA in the entire league. The Yankees can't match that as good as their bullpen is. Everything's telling you to go with the Yankees here, or not, not with the Yankees, with the Braves. Fade the Yankees here, especially after that disaster yesterday. I would not be surprised if the Yankees didn't score a single run today. There's just they got their hearts ripped out. Now they got to fly, you know, three hours down south to go play the best team in the league. I don't see this being a good day for the Yankees. Yeah, so slam dunk, Braves, Braves run line spot today. A couple guys to hit home runs. This, this is just – the Yankees are trash. Like, yesterday I saw that. Like, I, I had marked that game as a win. I'm going through my bets. I marked it as a win, like, the fifth inning and sixth inning, and I turn around. I, I go. I don't see money in my account. And it's because they this trash poverty franchise said, hey, Marlins, you guys win the game. We don't want to win it. We're, we're, we're terrible. We're poverty. We want to be under 500. We're two games from that. You know, I had a really bad beat yesterday, too. We're at the end of the show, so I might as well share it with you. I had the Rangers' money line against the Giants. The Giants were, like, minus 140 favorites. And I saw that. I said, this is 1 million percent a trap line. But I don't care. I'm walking into it. I'm taking the Rangers' money line for plus 125 or whatever it was. It's the bottom of the ninth inning. Logan Webb is is en route to a complete game shutout. And the, the Rangers get – I think they get a double. I think Semyon hits a double. So the, the Giants end up pulling Webb with eight and two-thirds. They then get an RBI. They tie the game. They go to extras. They score. And now they're up 2-1, two, two outs, two strikes in the bottom of the 10th inning. And the Giants that are hitting 206 since the All-Star break hit a walk-off home run with, on their last pitch. That, that was a really bad beat. Grant, I hate to say it, though, and I did see that. But, like, when there's a trap line, like, yesterday, like, the Mets, Braves, like, that looked like a trap line. I mean, the Braves were only like minus 130. They should have been minus 190. Like, you kind of know when you play those trap lines, like, because I played the Mets, I'm like, you're never really safe, you know? Like, it's like, you know the other team's probably going to win the entire game, even though it looks good. It's like, I was like, like, the Braves, the Braves went up 3 nothing, and I'm like, oh, here we go again. But then the Mets started to fight back a little bit. I'm like, they're keeping this too, like, this is just, I've seen this play out so many times. Like, I know the Mets are going to win this baseball game today. Yeah, but I mean, I've... 
Yeah. Final strike of the game, walk off home run for a team that has the worst batting average in the league. That's hard to predict. Yeah. Yeah. But what's not hard to predict, Tanner? We got a whole lot more MLB betting picks and some NFL betting picks on the way as well. Tanner and I are going to be giving you our favorite NFL preseason bets that this Friday. So make sure you guys are tuned in, locked in, subscribe to the channel. And Tanner, why don't you get us on out of here? That was Ride the Line, the greatest show in sports betting entertainment. Stay right.